Good morning to everyone in the Americas. Good afternoon to everyone joining from Europe and Africa, and good evening to those in Asia Pacific. I'm Julian Gordon, the VP for Asia Pacific for Hyperledger, the open source blockchain initiative at the Linux Foundation. And I am delighted to be here to introduce this webinar on the important, timely, and some would say urgent subject of making disruptive technologies the silver bullet for airlines in the new normal. Firstly, I'd like to thank Hyperledger member Mindtree, for whom we are collaborating to bring you this webinar today. We have an amazing panel with us today, an expert lineup of leaders in tech, blockchain, and aviation. They know more than most how COVID-19 has devastated the aviation industry, how the post-pandemic airline sector is taking shape, how those ahead of the curve are making innovative changes right now to emerge stronger, and how blockchain and other disruptive tech are vital to their success. Today, they will discuss the key opportunities, efficiencies, and competitive advantage blockchain offers the aviation industry, along with the challenges ahead and progress to date. Next slide, please. Before you begin, I'd like to take you quickly through some of the housekeeping items. You are currently on listen-only mode. If you do have questions during the webinar, please use the Q&A function in the Zoom chat at the bottom to submit them. We'll gather questions during the discussion then have a Q&A at the end. For those on Twitter, please use the hashtag Aviation Tech Webinar or Aviation Webinar or, and tag a Mindtree Limited and Hyperledger. And now to the agenda. I'm delighted to set the scene, then hand, I'll be delighted first and first five minutes to set the scene, then hand over to Radha Krishnan uh, to introduce the exciting work Mindtree is doing in this area. Then we'll have our panel discussion around six key discussion areas, followed by the Q&A. Next slide, please. To begin, to, it is an honor to introduce our esteemed experience panel at the cutting edge of technology innovation in aviation today. Firstly, Juan Ivan Martin. Juan has over 20 years experience in technology. And for the past 10 years, he has been with the International Air Transport Association or IATA, heading areas including innovation, digital transformation, and now with the IATA's travel pass. And secondly, we have Niall Van de Woe. Uh, Niall is managing director and co-founder of Clive uh, Data Services. He has over 30 years experience in the air cargo industry, which began with building pallets during his university days. Previously, Niall worked at Seabree Cargo Advisory, Jepson, which is a Boeing subsidiary, and KLM Cargo. And now to Adnan Salat. Uh, Adnan has two decades IT industry experience with extensive experience in travel and transportation application development, management practices, and product development. He heads the solution and consulting group with Mindtree's travel, transportation, and hospitality, hospitality unit, creating solutions for airlines, hotels, and travel service providers. And then Santanu Mukherjee, Santanu is a senior technical consultant with a history in the IT and services industry, skilled in a plethora of technologies, requirements analysis, enterprise architecture, and agile methodologies. Santanu now is the principal architect for the Mindtree Blockchain Center of Excellence. And now to the host of today's webinar, Mindtree's Radhakrishnan Rajagopalan, also known as RK who is a senior global executive with an impressive background spearheading large program management technology delivery, product engineering, competency, and leadership development. He is the global head of customer success, data, and intelligence of Mindtree. So now, RK, I'd like to hand over to you to introduce the exciting work Mindtree is doing in this space. Thank you, thank you, Julian. Uh, welcome and good, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. People have joined us uh, from around the world today. Uh, pretty excited to be part of uh, uh, you know this this webinar and hosting all of you. Um, just take a couple of minutes to kind of uh, set the context in terms of who we are uh, from a company perspective, what we do in this area, um, and the relevancy that it brings to the table. More so, as Julian said, in the context of how the pandemic has impacted in you know in all of our lives. And how you know this technology in particular um, is, is gaining traction and momentum and the need of the hour as well. 
Um, we are a we are a 22 year young company, um, you know, a born digital company uh, doing IT services and digital transformation work for uh, the past two decades, uh, backed up by one of the India's largest industrial conglomerates called Larson and Tubro. It's a $21 billion company, uh, pretty known for, you know, construction, heavy engineering, uh, defense and uh, um, such technologies and, you know, a very, very reputed industrial house in India. Um, picked up Mindtree a couple of years ago, and we have been on a roll in terms of our growth. Um, and numbers are speaking for itself. We are a $1.2 billion organization ourselves, uh, completely focused on digital transformation, um, you know, very particular in the emerging technology uh, sector. Um, globally, about 27,000 plus uh, Mindtree Minds, as we call uh, technology specialists, are helping our clients accelerate their digital transformations and embracing the cutting and bleeding edge of the technology so that you know they impact their customers positively uh, spread across the globe uh, we have officers around uh, you know 24 locations 24 countries around the world and we, we serve the uh, global markets uh, next slide please so as we uh, you know as you heard from us in terms of our spread and, and where we are and why we are calling ourselves a digitally trans digital transformation company you know, um, we have been focused on um, what, is, what we call as four by four by four strategy. What it essentially means is the four selected industry groups where deeply, where we deeply penetrate, you know, the retail consumer goods and manufacturing, the banking, financial services and insurance, travel, transportation, logistics, and hospitalities, which is going to be the key agenda today as to how blockchain and you know the technologies are going to be impacting um, in the uh, this particular industry. And communications, media, and technology as, as uh, uh, another industry cluster, if you will. And we just got started in healthcare. Uh, we have started making investments in healthcare in terms of taking that to the next level. Um, very similar to the four industry groups, we uh, kind of formed uh, four service lines, which is customer success, which is front ending most of what we do. And as most of us know, the pandemic in the last 18 months have accelerated a lot of our customer um, you know, investments in terms of how they want to be increasing their digital footprint. Most of our customers, irrespective of which industry group they are, is embracing some form of digital transformation. So customer success uh, leads the pack in terms of providing systems of engagement, better user interaction, footfall, and digital accelerating digital initiatives. That's been one of the biggest uh, service lines uh, for Mindtree, followed by data and intelligence, as we know that you know nothing moves without personalization these days, you know, irrespective of which industry we are coming from, data plays a very, very important role, how it's very closely tied to customer success. Um, and followed by cloud, and as we know that cloud has become the center stage of uh, the infrastructure that's actually enabling all of this data and intelligence and customer success technologies, and then the enterprise IT, which is into the traditional enterprise resource planning, enterprise application services, human resource applications, so on and so forth with a very strong and powerful consulting group, which kind of glues all of these uh, technologies and service lines together that will enable our customers to get onto the digital transformation journey. Uh, finally, the last four represents the geographies that we serve, which is the, uh, you know, the markets that we serve, North America, UK and Ireland, continental Europe, Asia Pacific and Middle East, and we've been pretty aggressively investing and growing um, in, in these geographies. This pretty much sums up, you know, what is Mindtree's strategy in terms of how do we take the digital transformation, cutting edge tech solutions and technologies to our clients using these industry groups and so with the service lines and to the geographies that we serve. Next slide, please. So now coming back to the main attraction of this show today um, is you know, uh, the, the, the mind trees blockchain practice and why we are too keen about you know, investing in this practice and uh, working with our clients to transform uh, you know, their digital journey using the blockchain and hyper, you know, uh, hyperledger kind of technologies. Uh, we incubated, started or founded this blockchain practice way back in 2016 with a small footprint. Uh, Mindtree found the necessity to get started on this. We strongly believe that this is a technology that's going to cement the future with part of the digital transformation journey our clients take. So um, across a spectrum of consulting services, engineering services, technologies and partnerships, we laid out a clear roadmap that this is going to be one of the futuristic technologies that we need to embrace. From that perspective, um, our investments in 2016 and creating the center of excellence around blockchain and related technologies actually has given, started giving us a rich uh, dividend. Um, you know, a number of client engagements, proof of concept, helping our clients getting into the 
advanced stage of moving into this technology um, as you know allowed us to come up with the use cases which we can leverage across our client base uh, the uh, helping our clients in terms of you know how do we even embrace a technology like blockchain how do we are you ready or you feel ready to embrace this technology what are the nuances that one has to form so do we have an assessment methodology from a consulting perspective that we can help our customers bootstrap into this technology area helping them choose a platform um, building products and, and uh, solutions around these technologies and bringing innovation to the table at the forefront of what our clients want us to see um, contributing to the you know open source uh, you know uh, te technology stack as well um, to that extent we have been uh, we are happy to be partnering with a multitude of technology vendors in this area particular hyperledger family being part of this blockchain moment is one of the um, you know biggest investments that we have made in the last 18 to 24 months um, and um, you know um, that shows up in how how much the analysts are embracing as we can see for yourself in terms of BPIFG or Nelson Hall the recognition that we've been um, getting from some of these uh, analysts are mind blowing right you know i think um, this is an area to be invested this is an area that mindry would continue to invest and stay uh, for a long long time and uh, will continue to maximize our investments working with our clients very closely um, and start contributing to this open source community as well um, i you know i know there is a action packed agenda today for the next 45 minutes and happy to be part of the sessions um, looking forward to have an engaging discussions with, uh, with, with all of you. Um, hopefully, by the end of this, you have uh, good takeaways from uh, this webinar and this uh, panel discussion. With that, uh, over to you, Julian. Okay, thank you. Thank you, RK. That's excellent. Wow, it's great to see all the, the fantastic work and definitely uh, great to be, you know, I think you're very much part of the, the Hyperledger community, Hyperledger family, and seeing some great stuff coming from Wintree. So thank you for that. So now we're going to move to uh, to our discussion topics. Uh, the first uh, topic we're going to do today. So we have six different topics. Uh, the first area uh, is technologies uh, to transform uh, uh, aviation. So uh, for that, I'm going to actually ask a question maybe to Niall, Adnan, and, and Yuan. Um, so we all know how this pandemic has impacted commercial airlines and air cargo. So as these industries emerge from the pandemic, what are some of the key technologies that have the potential to transform and drive growth uh, in av aviation? So I'm gonna put that to, to Niall first. So Niall. Thank you, Julian. Yeah. And uh, good day to everybody. Um, yeah, so I will take the perspective from an air freight point of view. And uh, what we have seen is that uh, the whole COVID situation has seemed to, to, to speed up uh, the process of embracing um, digital uh, booking process. We've seen the rise of platforms to which airlines connect directly and open up their capacity uh, to their clients to book directly, uh, and which on the one hand provides them efficiency uh, on the, on, from a different perspective. It also allows them to, to price more dynamically, although that, it's not currently happening perhaps that much, but uh, I do expect it to be a stepping stone for airlines to become uh, even more responsive uh, to changes in the marketplace and therefore uh, yeah, tune uh, the pricing uh, relative to uh, demand and supply. A, a second uh, element that is now yeah, seem to be coming to fruition uh, I mean, if I take a step back, many years ago, we had all these uh, airlines talking about big data, but it was questionable uh, to what extent people were, were truly implementing it. I see now more and more, um, and AI is definitely uh, artificial intelligence, a, a buzzword, uh, but I, I see now uh, more and more practical examples where people are using AI, for example, to book how much cargo capacity is available on passenger planes uh, depending on weather, uh, passenger loads, um, and, and what have you. So we, it's being used to, to predict um, at a far more granular level than, than some of the um, traditional tools that were used in air freight. So things have been, um, yeah, I would say, speeding up in the last uh, 24 months. Okay. Um, and Adnan, would you like to add to that, to those comments? Sure, thanks. Um, hello, everyone. Um, are you able to hear me? 
We are able to help you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll I'll kind of talk about um, yeah. more from a passenger airline perspective. And if you look at from the passenger airline perspective, I mean there are two post-COVID challenges. There was the near-term challenges, which was around surviving the pandemic, which was around controlling cost, ensuring safety, uh, and some of them still remain as as challenges, uh, including the staffing, uh, staff productivity, and other areas. There is also the midterm kind of challenges, which are around recovery and revival, which is, uh, you know, the demand patterns have kind of changed. And there's kind of revenue compression that you're seeing. There's also a lot of legacy that is there on the passenger side. So given that perspective, I would say the three things that are more um, kind of on the airline's agenda from a technology IT perspective. One is modernizing the core. And when you're saying modernizing the core, it's around decoupling, it's creating resilient architectures, uh, doing a lot of uh, platform creation. And, and I think a lot of those technologies kind of come in because airlines have been on, the, uh, on, the, on that um, old uh, legacy technology for quite some time. The second area, of course, is around digital transformation where we are seeing quite a lot of new technologies coming in, you know, contactless travel is a big thing. We in Mindtree are doing quite a lot of contactless travel work today for our customers, be it large hospitality chains or car rentals or airlines. We are doing contactless uh, travel. And this is like, you know, something that as a traveler, you and I expect uh, more and more contactless. So that digital transformation is happening. The other area, of course, is around um, the whole idea around digital health passport, which is kind of taking uh, more precedence nowadays. Uh, and of course, uh, virtual uh, agents, um, the loyalty relationships have also changed on the digital transformation agenda, where you're now looking at more partnerships. And you know, th there are examples around the airline industry where um, American Airlines, JetBlue, and Alaska kind of tied in together. There's quite a lot of examples where these partnerships are evolving and, and airlines are trying to kind of take um, advantage of that. And then there's also the innovation agenda, which is around, you know, how can we do cognitive call centers? How can we do uh, different kinds of things which are uh, addressing the leisure market, which is the business and leisure combination market. So these kind of digital transformation agendas obviously are um, are using up quite a lot of new technologies that have to be have to come together and kind of form that that uh, amalgamation in order to move forward. And the final area I would say is around controlling costs, uh, which is going on the enterprise side, which is going on the IT operations, uh, which is on the operations side for an airline. All those areas require uh, modernization as well as investments. Um, for let's say MRO or other areas um, on the ops side to keep the costs down. And, and I think those three things and the technologies around those three things, uh, modernizing core digital transformation and controlling costs kind of sum up the ways in which um, the short-term agenda will work. Okay, interesting. So there's three, three kind of areas you're looking at, right? It'll be interesting, it's more about modernization or cutting costs. I mean, hopefully both can come together, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you want, do you have any um, opinions on technologies? Emerging sure technologies? Thank you. And good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, yeah, I think I agree from a technological standpoint on the digital side of things. Definitely, there is a lot of use cases that, that we just heard, but they are around the technologies of, you know, big data, cloud computing, predictive analytics, business intelligence. I mean, those technologies are here, they've been around for many years, they are evolving. And while they evolve, you can capture new use cases that are better and better and better. And I think aviation has been using a lot of these technologies for many years, right? So from the pressurization system on the aircraft is using artificial intelligence and it's been around for 50 years. So th there is a number of things where, where aviation has been a pretty, pretty early user and we continue looking into that. The, 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 the limit comes to the scale and the, having everybody using the same thing. But from a competitive standpoint, individual players can and are using a lot of these, uh, these technologies. When it goes beyond digital transformation, so there is a number of technologies that in my view are transforming or will be transforming aviation. So if you think about all these 
new manufacturers that are doing vertical takeoff and landing. And there, there is a, a, a thousands of, uh, of aircraft that are being ordered as we speak that will revolutionize the way we travel and they will be enabling what we call urban aviation. That will be a game changer. You're looking at companies that are looking at speed of sound flight, right? So companies such as Boom, like what used to be Concorde, et cetera. So, so all these will transform the way we were doing aviation. You can think electrical vehicles, right? You can think uh, drones and you can think sustainable aviation fuels. All those uh, transformation or those technologies that are not necessarily from a, a digital nature will also transform aviation uh, in, the, in the near and the long uh, future. Wow, that's, that's, that's some amazing stuff there, right? <laughs> uh, a, a, a lot of future. Uh, so so let's, let's now look at, at blockchain. So if we go to the next, next discussion topic. Uh, so I think uh, we, we talked about emerging technologies. Obviously, blockchain is one of those. And we kind of held back, I know, on the first question because of that, because we're now going to focus in on blockchain. So I'm going to ask uh, uh, Santanu, uh, so to what degree do you think uh, blockchain is being deployed in aviation? Uh, today and, and 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 going forward. Sure, Julian. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, good morning. Uh, Jul, uh, I see this particular industry in uh, two. I mean, in total, eight different uh, segments. When I see the first is like you know the identity part, the provenance and the visibility, uh, the passenger reconciliation. Mm -hmm. The payment reconciliation, the value exchange, track and uh, tracing, the uh, uh, ecosystem reconciliation, and uh, the tokenization. So all these use cases, what uh, we understand, uh, are can also get you know segmented into small small uh, pieces. And uh, if I like you know share some data here, as uh, uh, standing in 2019. Nearly 423 USD million um, was invested for aviation uh, in blockchain. And uh, you, I mean, having a CAGR rate of 22.7%, uh, it is uh, estimated that uh, nearly one, uh, 1,394 USD million will be invested by 2025. Now, if we see the original data that nearly 1,000 of uh, you know, the, the use cases were uh, tried in 2020 and out of only 14% of them went into production and that to within that 14% only 1% is in aviation uh, industry uh, julian so yeah what what i see here is a, a total a transformation from the existing the current state to a transformed state and the main five pillars are the if we see in the blockchain which is helping this particular transformation are like you know the distributed the decentralized the immutability, the encryption, and the tokenization. So all those five channels are helping the total industry from the current state to the transformed state. Uh, Julian. Okay, excellent. And you got it. I think. Hi so. everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, excellent. But can't you? Can you see me? No. Hi, Christian. Hi everybody. Hi. Hi. So, but I'm I'm actually only a viewer. So. Yeah. So so next we're going to go to yeah. So Christian, do you have any any views on that? Or oh, I was going to go to one right. So Santana, you've done all, all the uh, uh, you know some great um, um, uh, uh, overview of some of the things. But uh, Santana, you were going to. I mean, we talked before. You said, and I think you're yeah. saying that basically that the, the challenge with the aviation industry is is it legacy systems. Uh, do you, what do you see as the challenge, uh, as many other industries, I think, are further ahead in blockchain? Uh, what do you see that the challenges uh, at, from uh, the perspective of, uh, of the aviation industry when it comes to blockchain? Uh, so, Julian, what I see mainly, it's not the technology. Uh, and uh, the main challenge is, is uh, you know, the uh, understanding the use case that's very specific that where the particular use case will be uh, fitting into in this particular industry how much the roi will be given and the the main thing is the uh, creating the consortium because in the total value chain on this uh, industry uh, all the stakeholders should be you know agreed upon to be on in i mean in that particular chain system so that the uh, the output the 
the every i mean the total uh, end result should be you know the optimistic so to uh, reach that particular state yet i mean it is uh, the aviation industry is yet to like you know uh, go into that particular mode to attain that particular level julian okay great so yuan do you had i know you were talking about some uh, um some of the challenges right so i think you're talking about i think one of the big areas would be regulation right uh, having a homogenous maybe uh, uh regulatory framework do you see that how do you see that that working moving forward no good, good question thank you julian yeah. I, I think well in, in the framework of what iata does we are launching standards that are using uh, been used worldwide Right, so often, like the the, the, the different uh, heterogeneous regulatory frameworks, uh, become a challenge, right? So, so maybe you have found a very good technological solution, but while you're trying to deploy it, you hit different uh, roadblocks in different countries, because maybe I don't know if it comes down to replacing an established um, player or process in a given country. Uh, your process uh, needs to be accepted, right? And maybe you must continue going through the established partner or process. And therefore, it is a break to worldwide adoption. Right? And, and that often is the case when you touch uh, regulated areas such as uh, payments or things linked to to um, maybe accounting or other other matters linked to taxation, etc., that are heavily regulated. And, and that, in our views, uh, is is getting better. You have more and more companies and sorry and, and governments that are becoming more transparent and clear on what is their uh, views with regards to technologies such as blockchain. But it's not always the case. And I think that that becomes a, a break to worldwide innovation because it's challenging to create something that is accepted by everybody. We could give many examples, as you've seen, on, for example, cryptocurrencies accepted or not by different governments around the world and changing their mind. So, so that doesn't help eh, to, when, it, when it comes to worldwide um, adoption of a certain standard. Yeah, because you said there's a lot of regulation. Uh, in, in, in the airline industry. You also, I think we talked about the fact that, that, that there's a lot of uh, legacy technology that exists that works today, <laughs> that people are very, uh, but do you, see, do you see any barriers to that or, uh, or benefits moving to blockchain to help that? Well, the benefit and the opportunity is to leapfrog, right? So, yeah. right. so certain certain systems that are, especially the ones that are more industry utilized, common infrastructure and, and solutions, might be using not the latest technology out there, right? Yeah. So, so often, like they might be an opportunity. The, the 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 risk always comes to how do you transit from the current world to the future world without disrupting the operations, right? So you have billions of people traveling, hopefully with after COVID, they will come back to to, uh, yeah. to big numbers, but uh, how, how do you stop using that and transition? That, that, that is always the key. Uh, right now, you know, many of, of the airlines are in, uh, going through difficult times with the, the current situation, COVID impacting volumes. So there are voices saying, well, now it's the time to migrate to, to future platforms and technologies because volumes are down, but at the same time, you don't have the money is necessary, right? So, so it's kind of a, of a challenge how to do that. But, but to answer your question, yes, uh, there, there are opportunities and there are challenges. I think in some parts of the aviation space, we still use uh, technology from the 60s, right? And, and, and that at some point will need to, to transform and the opportunity probably is to leapfrog in certain cases, yes. Okay, excellent. So um, so I think we've got some great cases there and, and I think that obviously we have the, the, the use case, right, uh, for blockchain. So maybe we'll now look at, at Pacifics, go down a little bit further down into the areas within uh, uh, blockchain. Obviously, air cargo has been an area, I think, that has not suffered so much. I think we're all buying stuff from Amazon and stuff is being flying around, even though that maybe that is a challenge, right? Uh, so um, maybe I'll ask this to Santanio again, is, is how can blockchain uh, uh, benefit air cargo? Uh, we're hearing about the potential of blockchain in areas such as streamlining document management, tracking settlements, uh, but you know, there's also China. So, so maybe Santanio, you can talk a little bit about that. Thank you, Julian. Uh, yeah. Nice question. So uh, if we see um, that when this pandemic started, mainly um, the, the travel uh, airline, I mean, the traveling industry, it went down 
but the cargo thing i mean the cargo industry you know uh, it it was there it was uh, picking up again yeah. and it is right now also it is picking up so uh, in if if you see uh, from the 60s as uh, you on told that some of the you know the already existing solutions are um, mainly from the document transfer if you see are hazardous to change mainly the ownership even for the time and cost in the document transit uh maybe there is a chance of uh, documents getting stolen or documents getting lost uh the storage of the documents um in in the warehouses it is like you know pretty huge and uh, there is a huge challenge what uh, we see as when we are interacting with some of the clients they are seeing it's like uh, you know uh, big warehouses are there because they need to keep it for 10 years of uh, documents and uh, there is no automated transit uh, of the information when it is coming to the payments uh, uh, in 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 uh, in connect with the, when the document is there with the particular stakeholder the previous people the previous stakeholder should get paid immediately so that particular connect is missing in the current uh, industry so uh, what we need is uh, we can see the blockchain can provide us something secure fast uh, uh, which is like you know automated flexible uh, interoperable trustful confidential uh some you know the use of friendly platform uh to like you know immediately uh, which which can you know immediately uh, initiate the payment in the background and uh, with with the help of you know the wallets which are there uh, already with all the stakeholders in the value chain in the ecosystem then we can see that the payments no need of like you know waiting for 45 or 60 days it can be initiated the payments can be initiated to the freight forwarders or the ground handlers so whenever it is required it is, uh, the payments can get uh, immediately initiated julia okay excellent and uh, and juan do you have any any comments beyond that blockchain and- oh, no uh, oh. no i agree with that i think well ayata has uh, quite an extensive uh, digital cargo yeah. agenda right so yeah. there is a number of of initiatives that, that ayata is is uh, is pursuing and help other members in the point you're you're saying that there is a vision of having data sharing with fully digital end to end visibility of the shipments both to the to, the, to all the stakeholders and, and and i think there is a number of projects around this um i i think the challenge is more on on how to get to that end state the the, the what we could do i think it's it's been discussed for many years it's it's the challenge more on how everybody decide to at some point go and do it um but no no absolutely nice slide before and i absolutely agree with with what has been said and i'll i'll um, I, I, sorry sure I, i just wanted to add yeah, a few please, things please. Uh, yeah. as we as we're looking at blockchain in air cargo i mean of course yeah. there is this uh, the the uh, with the uh, if you look at the today's trend you know there's a supply chain issue on the sea cargo right there's, there's a huge kind of uh, there are a lot of bottlenecks today a lot of ports are closed uh, yeah. uh, in us the west uh, west coast ports uh, ports are closed and there was some closure in the chinese ports as well and that is putting a lot of pressure on holiday inventory to be moved and you will see a lot of it is being booked through air cargo today now what is happening is of course air cargo is not um, i mean the prices have gone through the roof that's one thing but it is not a fully digital um uh, process as what shantanu kind of touched upon and iata is also doing that entire digitalization but as we move forward i think this area will see a uh, a surge in bo- blockchain uh, kind of uh, usage because a lot of the supply chain use cases that are already there you know where you kind of validate where this product is coming for whether it is uh, temperature controlled vaccines or whether there's it's a um it's a product that is coming from a, a organically sourced place all those kind of use cases which are supply chain use cases will also kind of come into air cargo and they will become more and more important so so in terms of the the journey that i'm seeing there's of course the journey towards digitalization and then there's the other part of the journey which is to take care of all the supply chain aspects and that will be very heavily dependent on blockchain because those are proven use cases in supply chain yeah there are there are supply i mean supply chain is the number one or not num- mm-hmm. one of the number ones 
banking. Uh, after banking, financial, but, but you know, they're, 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 you can debate that. But uh, definitely we're seeing supply chain. And, and you can see that in the, um, uh, I don't know, maybe we see the trade lens, GSBN, which is the Global Shipping yeah. Blockchain Network. Yeah. Yeah. We have enormous yeah. networks globally that are tracking cargo on ships. Uh, so yeah. why not planes? Is that is that yeah. maybe, I mean, why not you or anyone have any opinion why that's different? Or is that? It is. I think yeah. it's a it's a journey. It is just yeah. a, an evolution. And so yeah. there's a step one and then there's yeah. a step two. So it is going to get there. Okay, excellent. So I think I, uh, a lot happening there in air cargo. So now let's move to uh, the commercial airlines and, and airports. Um, so I think this is slightly different, uh, obviously. Uh, so the, the, the use cases here. So it's been deployed. Uh, you know, blockchain is being deployed in commercial airlines and airports to make passengers travel safe and seamless and enhance the loyalty. Uh, can, uh, can you guys throw some light on the use cases? Um, I believe such a seamless revenue, shares across partners, inventory management, and code share. And I think, I think, I think Adnan, we're going to start with you this time. Sure, sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, there is a, there's a huge change that has happened in travel uh, during the pandemic, and which is something that, you know, uh, being, um, I have been part of the travel and we've been part of travel for quite some time. What was happening was there was a process that was defined and that process used to work very well. You know, it was disrupted uh, in, the, uh, in 2001 when the event happened, but uh, since then it has kind of stabilized and it has come back to its, there is a very well-defined process and it, it used to work smoothly. And that process was, you know, what, what we call as the above the wing process. So it's the passenger processes that you that happened at the airport or before the before you arrive at the airport. And they used to work very well. And then this pandemic has happened. Uh, of course, travel all stopped completely. But as travel is starting, and, and especially the international travel is starting and becoming bigger and bigger, uh, the process now has additional steps that got added. And these additional steps are new steps to the travel process. So suddenly you had a very well-oiled travel process, which was working fine. And now you have these new steps that have come in and that has kind of disrupted the whole um, ecosystem. Uh, and you're trying to then find new ways of solving that, be it uh, contactless or be it track and tracking bags or be it uh, you know, um, tracking um, identity, all those use cases kind of have now been loaded on top of it. And it will take time for the industry to kind of come back and, and you know, find a, 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 a new defined process for this, uh, this changed status. But I'm sure that is going to happen very quickly. So that is what we are looking for in terms of the different use cases that are coming in. Uh, apart from that, the other thing that has also happened is um, as we went into the trans, uh, into the pandemic, a lot of the airlines um, did fleet rationalization. And fleet rationalization led to changing their way their networks are arranged. So if they were flying 10 destinations, they were, they're now flying less than that or flying at a less, lesser frequency or adding new destinations which are more leisure centric. And so the, the entire network planning kind of changed around it also. And that led to now, uh, if, if a passenger wants to travel to a particular destination and you don't have a flight for that, you're now looking for alliances, interline, code share, all kinds of things. And that again changes the whole dynamic of the, and the industry and we will have to kind of bring in newer uh, ways in which you can do revenue sharing or, or those kind of um, aspects uh, and, uh, and settlements uh, post the, the flights as well. So the, those aspects are coming in. The demand went to zero. You cannot depend on the past uh, forecasted data, past data to forecast the future data. So now you're now in a state where you have to look at uh, a way in which you can define new uh, forecasts based on near-term data. And that again has led to newer use cases on merchandising and trying to find different ways in which you can you know, get more 
people to come on to your uh, book on to your airline as well as to you know uh, increase the wallet share that is there in terms of uh, ancillary uh, uh, services that you are also providing so all those changes that are happening will require payment systems will require settlement systems and that is where i think blockchain will become more and more important in in the airline industry as we move forward okay interesting uh, and uh, santani do you want to add to that uh, yeah absolutely i mean uh, thank you adnan for you know for creating that uh, uh, plane i mean it's it's really helpful i mean for me because when i see uh, that the maximize uh, revenue opportunity for any of the uh, carrier it is you know uh, uh, it's a target to uh, remain fair competitive right while uh, creating an opportunity to generate this type of incremental uh, revenue though the uh, i mean through the sale of the ancillary products as you told and uh, if we see the main target uh, is to like you know reach uh, the customer globally and mainly uh, whenever because right now uh, after pandemic what we are seeing that the amount of flight time has been lessened uh, drastically so if we can use that particular amount of time when the passenger is flying to you know the channel uh, of merchant uh, merchandising that will be like you know uh, the customer choice or the traveler choice with the enhanced uh, uh, brand value which is needed to get you know uh, uh get attached uh so so there is a need of like this uh, the channel uh consistency of seamlessly uh, seamlessly where the airport merchants can connect while the uh, traveler is flying during that particular flight time so i can you know uh view that particular way how uh, the business can go up the revenue can get generated okay so that's seamless uh, seamless revenue share across partners using uh, during the flight. So how does that work, work with blockchain? What's the... Uh... So uh, if we... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, if we see that uh, uh, the loyalty, uh, yeah. uh, which, whichever right now what we see that this particular loyalty uh, thing, the concept is there with each and every traveler. Now, the traveler are not able to, you know, share... Uh, uh, use this or redeem this particular points if it is lesser than a, a particular limit. Now, if there is any option or opportunity or any platform where they can yeah. go ahead and use that particular, you know, that uh, low level of uh, points to like, you know, use a Wi-Fi or to buy a coffee or to have a drink while it is flying through the 60,000 feet above, right? So uh, that way, this particular seamlessly frictionless um, a, a connect with the customer will be there. Uh, Julian, I I think so. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, and Juan, do you have any any comments on that as well? Absolutely. I think I mean there is merits of of potential use cases, right? And yeah. and I think you you gave a, a few very good examples. No, like, like from an asset tracing perspective, you we touch on it on the cargo side of things for the supply chain, but it could apply to bags or it could apply to to spare parts. It could apply to many things that are within the, the aviation uh, spectrum. Uh, frequent flyers uh, programs could be tokenized. That, 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 that is an excellent. It, from, from another perspective, in 2015 already, we launched this IATA coin, right? So IATA coin was trying to have real-time cross-border transactions at very low cost, right? And, and that was going to help on distribution and payments. So, so it was going to be a substitute to, to some of, of the current forms of, 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 of transacting but also was looking at having an automation in revenue accounting by the usage of smart contracts, right? So, so it was looking at, 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 uh, at doing that. We did a number of, of testing with some airlines and it was never deployed. It was never deployed for all of these good reasons that we discussed before the, the, the breaks innovation. Then the other thing is we've been working, as you know, on this uh, IATA travel bus, right? Uh, that is more in the health spectrum side of things. Uh, the, 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 this bus is utilizing also the, the, the blockchains, in this case, uh, sovereign, to utilize the, the self-sovereign identity concept and, 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 and helping with that the, the, our member airlines and the industry to uh, reactivate travel uh, with COVID. So it's, it's helping to manage COVID tests and, uh, and uh, vaccine certificates. So there, there is another application that has been accelerated due to the, the, the necessity of, uh, you know, 
uh, uh, reactivate in the industry through 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 COVID, and it's been deployed in in in, in a large number of countries, and, and a number of airlines are testing it. So this is another great use case where you know things have been accelerated due to the burning platform, right, of, of, of COVID. And, and we could think of many others. I think in 2018, we published a white paper with a long list of potential use cases. I yeah. think each one of those could, could be could be analyzed independently. But I believe Absolutely. that payment, uh, smart contracts, tokenization, asset tracking, definitely. And you can apply that to, to a number of uh, specific use cases. Okay, great. So a lot of great use cases. But I think the one that... Uh, uh, that you mentioned there, which we're going to go into next, is self-sovereign identity, right? And the use of passes and that. I think COVID has been a, a, an amazing catalyst for that. So I think, and then you're going to go through some, talk about some of that, and particularly some of the stuff that maybe Mindtree is working in, in this area. If you could share that, sure. that would be great. Sure, thanks. Uh, thanks, yeah. Julian. Um, so essentially, uh, you know, what is happening is we work with a lot of airlines and um, a lot of them are large network carriers um, and uh, in the on the digital side there's obviously the uh, the mobile platforms and the web platforms um, we also work on the departure control side which is to manage the whole check-in process and um, what we've seen is that there is there are multiple standards that are kind of coming in um, in terms of you know IATA has a travel pass uh, IATA has a health passport uh, travel pass uh, standard. There is a, a digital green certificate from the European Union that is being conceptualized. There is also other standards that are coming up uh, in different parts of the world. And what we are seeing also is from an, from an airline perspective, you look at it from the airline's view, uh, the airline is um, mandated to do certain things, you know, whether be it entry requirements or changing entry uh, changing uh, uh, restrictions by country, by different kind of places, or be it the tests that have to be done, or be it the, um, the uh, vaccine information that you have to carry. Uh, all this, these three things are kind of becoming, um, I would say they will stay here for some time as we go forward. So what we were looking at is we were looking at creating a solution uh, on blockchain, which is similar, um, which can be leveraged um, under the different kind of uh, various uh, standards that are available today and can help in terms of bringing these three things together. So that is our, our solution. We call it uh, the Mindtree's Digital Health Passport. And, uh, and basically it is a combination of uh, different kind of uh, technologies which will give an airline a long-term platform where they can uh, create uh, a help these new processes that have come up in the traveler journey, be it the processes around the uh, entry restrictions or the processes around um, vaccination or processes around tests. Uh, and that solution, the way we are kind of building that solution, we are building it uh, on Hyperledger with Eminem, uh, I think Travel Pass is also, and you can talk about that, is also built the same way. But what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, kind of bring it in, in terms of a solution that is a plug and play solution for an airline. So uh, we have quite a few customers that are interested in how to plug and play this this thing from a, from an airline's perspective, and that is what we are trying to bring uh, to the market. Uh, and you will see a lot of this um, details being rolled out as we move forward. Uh, we uh, we are doing a formal launch, so uh, just hold on, and and you will see that launch coming up very soon. Excellent, excellent. So. So we've seen that, I mean, from Hyperledger, we've seen that self-sovereign identity has been a topic that has been, uh, has been uh, you know, a top of mind. That's a great solution. I and mean, maybe you could talk, maybe, maybe you could, do you want to explain a little bit about what a self-sovereign identity is? Maybe spend a few seconds on that so people know what you mean by self-sovereign and the benefits of it? Sure. So essentially, the idea is very simple. The idea is, and it has been there for quite some time, yeah. which is to take the identity and give it uh, in the hands of the uh, user. So the user is able to then uh, 
provide uh, the identity um, to any um, any consumer, any uh, in any kind of organization that needs it, uh, and that is uh, on the prerogative of the user to kind of provide the identity information, uh, and it can be also compartmentalized. So you can have, if I want, don't want to give all the information. If I want to give, let's say, only my health information, I can only give my health information. So that's that power is something that is kind of uh, helped uh, by blockchain and is helped through self-sovereign identity as a solution. Yeah, so there's a whole the whole privacy thing. So you're, when you're sharing your Absolutely. your your information, your uh, uh, your your Sorry. certificate, you're only sharing the information that the customs officer needs to see or whoever needs to see. They don't need to know all your other your other other information. So yeah, that's excellent. and the sharing is of yeah. course everything yeah. is um, cryptography is built into the basic of of, yeah. uh, of blockchain. So everything is secure in in the way you're sharing it because those keys are, are obviously there's the encryption and there's the key. So I think that way it's a, it's a much better solution of managing identity and managing um, different kind of credentials. Okay, excellent. I think we could talk about this one because this really has, uh, <laughs> I've seen self-sovereign identity just and Ryan said what, what they're doing. So th this is a, a, a great technology that really is, I think COVID has really accelerated it, but we haven't got that much time left. So I'm now gonna look at the next one and look at the cha challenges with tech implementation. So we've got these great solutions. So uh, what are some of the challenges uh, with this tech implementation, particularly like blockchain, you know, change management, flat files. So I'm gonna now go to, to, uh, uh, to Nile, right? So maybe uh, we talked a little bit, you saw some of the challenges. Um, could, you, could you talk a little bit to that? Thank you for that. Yeah. If I would ask 100 people in the air cargo industry, what yeah. is blockchain? Yeah. I would expect to get 100 different answers. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of uh, that there is, not even on a high level, common understanding um, what it is, what it can do, uh, besides what they might read in the paper. And, and, and what, I, what I get from Air Cargo uh, magazines, that there's, there's more yeah. talk about the potential than about the actual success. Uh, so uh, when it comes to this kind of tech implementation, I think there's a lot of education uh, to be done uh, on what it could do. And it, the, the, the difficulty now is just bandwidth. Um, mm. the, the tremendous uh, strain there is now on, on, on airlines, forwarders, uh, and shippers alike just to get the day-to-day -day stuff moving, you know, I think will make it very difficult uh, to find a listening ear within these organizations, uh, let alone if you would like to do something throughout the chain. Just getting attention and, and, and access and funding in this current climate, is, yeah, I think, is, is, is very difficult. Uh, that being said, you know, there, there, there's never a, you know, a bad time to start educating. But I think from an air cargo point of view, uh, there is still a long way to go. Uh, this industry does not have a good track record in, in setting standards, um, with, if we put aside um, security and safety and measures um, as uh, demanded by uh, IATA, uh, of, of, of co collaborating. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a tough, tough cookie. Um, getting something that is uh, encompassing so many parties yeah. to get that implemented. So I think that's talked to what you said and uh, talking about, yeah, in terms of regulation and the regulation was, we talked about, I talked about the shipping industry, which has got, got tracking containers around the world, right? So um, yeah, so it is different in the aviation industry. You think it's, it's going to be the challenge. That is happening. Yeah? I mean, yeah. I think yeah. the, the issue is, um, yeah. can you find, it? is blockchain there to replace stuff that is already happening? Or yeah. is there potentially a new, like a leapfrog, a, a new yeah. use case, um, which the current technology cannot really support? Uh, there might be the potential, but replacing something that is already there in place, uh, I, I think I will be a bit on the, on the skeptical side there. Okay, I think it's a tough, a tough one, right? And uh, maybe you've seen previous <laughs> challenges, right? So, uh, so Yuan, do you have any? You talked oh, sure, earlier. Sure. You talked about leapfrogging technology, right? 
Correct. I mean, the, yeah. the opportunity is there. Then there are the challenges. So, so yeah. what Nial is is, yeah. is 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 saying is is yeah. exactly that. So, if yeah. the standard is not used by most of the people, you do not unleash the the, the benefit, right? So, yeah. The typical example is. We could invent the mobile phone and, and you and I, Julian, will be the only ones having a mobile phone. So it would have certain value, but you unleash yeah. the value when everybody has a mobile phone. Right? So so here is the same. You could create the best standard, have the best idea, but if it's not uh, you know, followed and, and, and endorsed and used by the, the, the largest part of the of the business, you do not unleash the benefits. Right? Um, for me, blockchain will do to intermediating companies, uh, businesses, what email did to the uh, postal industry. Right? So, so it, it, it will replace a number of things. The, 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 the power and the wisdom of the crowd is going to replace uh, trust, the business of trust, be it for money, notary services, registration. I mean, all, all the use cases we discussed before. If, if, if you trust your uh, community to be the ones guaranteeing that something is, is true um, and at a fraction of the cost of, of what the equivalent will be today to go to public notary, a bank or, or others, there is the opportunity, right? There is there that you, you will be impacting some of these intermediaries and, and reducing the cost for, for, for all. Now, that theoretically is very good that there are limits to full disintermediation, right? So I always put the example, you know, all these potential billionaires that lost their private key and they cannot access their Bitcoins, right? Okay. So when that happens and you have a bank, you just go downstairs, say, hi, here's my ID. How is the family? You have a coffee and they give you a new token to get back into your online. Now they will charge you 20 bucks, but that is the value of intermediation. So you need to choose. Okay, excellent. And 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 Santana, we've got just got a minute left. Sure. Um, yeah. So Julian, I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, all the uh, you know the points and the challenges, mainly from the governance perspective, yeah. I, see, I see the challenge. And uh, uh, also, I mean, the first, uh, you know, the statistics which I started with is in 2020, if we see only 14% of 1,000 use cases went into production and that to of 1% in aviation. So we can see that uh, the ball is moving, but it is the hindrances and, uh, you know, the resistance is there because of the standardization, as you and Neil uh, mentioned, the, uh, the complexity of this particular uh, the managing the network, which is already existing, and the legacy system, which is from the 60s, which is there. So it is, it is, you know, taking time to uh, help the people to realize uh, original value. So people are, you know, in mode of learning and more getting, you know, educated on this particular one, how to use this uh, with the other technologies amalgamated with, like, you know, AI, ML, and others, which uh, Arnan and uh, Yuan mentioned in the first question. So yeah, it is. Uh, it is suffer, taking some time, but of course, that's the future, which is uh, coming very super soon. Yeah, so I, let, I think I've just about run out of time. So if you can go to the last slide, the next slide with the Q&A. So we didn't have much time. We've got lots of questions and uh, we will try and answer those. Um, but if you have any more questions, please, uh, here's some people that you can write to. Uh, and also we have many uh, collaborative environments. Actually, maybe go to the next question, next one as well. Um, with the, the QR, hey, there's many ways you get involved in talking about blockchain and what we're doing. And particularly, uh, I think we're going to do more and more around the aviation, particularly with Mindtree, as we discussed today. Um, so I think we just, just started the conversation today, right? <laughs> I think there is a lot more uh, involved. And I really do uh, thank everybody uh, for you uh, uh, who are listening to this. Thank you very much. Uh, for for attending, uh, I would like to thank you, Mindtree, uh, for, uh, for 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 being part of this and organizing, helping us organize this. I'd like to thank RK, Yuan, Nile, Adnan, Santu for this great discussion. Um, and I think we will continue this. And uh, this is just a part of the journey, right? Uh, and uh, I thank you again to the audience. It's been a very interesting hour. Uh, please take care, everyone. Keep safe, and I hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, Julian. All right, I think we've still got lots of people there, right? Yeah, I was we wondering if have, we still have 24 participants. Thank you, everybody. So, uh, yeah. So why don't we why don't we connect again soon? All right. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Yep. Yes. 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 We'll connect again. Yeah. Yeah. Send, send us a link. I'll send I'll you a link. link. I'll send a link. Yeah. Yeah. Bye.